Welcome back. In this video, we'll be going through the week five CAD guide. Now, if you couldn't tell, it's just a little different because instead of building something according to instructions that we've laid out in slides, instead it's going to be structured as if someone is giving you this part that they want you to design in Inventor. Let's say that they give you a sketch, much like this one and this one, so that you can see the general shape and maybe a couple dimensions and then they tell you exactly what they need. So in this case, we're going to be using a uh, inventor so that we can create a protective shielding for a motor. So they want a half pipe kind of figure that is going to sit flush on a table. Okay, it's pretty basic. So we want the arc to make up the bend will be 160 degrees of a circle. And then the radius of that arc, of the inner arc, will be uh, 1.55 inches and then we're gonna be given a bunch of other dimensions. So let's get started with this arc. I'm gonna start with my sketch as always. And there are of course a bunch of different ways that you can create this part. The way that I'm going to be doing it might not even be the best way. But if you are struggling with where to start, maybe this video can help you out. So because we're given an arc with a, a radius then I'm going to go ahead and use this center point arc. So it's going to be a radius of 1.55 inches. And then I can make it 160 degrees. Okay. I'm going to want to zoom out just a little bit. If you'll give me a second. Okay. So now great, we have this arc. And then we want a flat part that's 1.75 inches. And just in case you don't know what I mean, I put it in this drawing here. You can see that this flat part that's not included in the arc is going to be 1.75 inches. And that's going to be on the outer side. So we need an outer side. So you can see there's an inner face and an outer face. And the thickness will be 0 0.1 inches. So of course I could make an offset of this arc, but instead I'll just make another arc. Because sometimes with offsets, it pulls in more dimensions than we want, uh, and it's a little harder to edit. So I'll make it 1.65 inches and 160 degrees. All right. And then we want this line to be 1.75 inches. Um, but before we start, we want to make sure that these lines will be tangent. And I played around with this earlier, and I found that if I created a line straight down, then when we fix the arc to be uh, symmetrical over this axis, then it won't work as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a construction line, just a, an arbitrary amount of 0.5 inches. And I'll right click and create a construction line. And I can dimension this angle by clicking these two angle lines here. And this will be 10 degrees because it's 160 degree arc. And so this will make it symmetrical. So now that we've done that, we can create this line here and we'll start it at this point and we'll make it 1.75 inches. And then, so I don't have to worry about the angle, we can use this tangent constraint here. So I can click this line and this arc and it'll automatically make it tangent. And then I can create the inner line. Uh, and I'll make it 1.75 inches as well. And because I created it at the angle of 170 degrees, then it doesn't have to worry about uh, being tangent because it already knows that value. But if you have a complicated angle, that's not necessarily, you can't just figure it out by looking at it. It's super easy to just put in your length and then make it tangent. And we'll do it one more time. If you really wanted to, you could have mirrored this. That is a perfectly valid way. You just need a line going up this vertical axis here. Okay, 
So we've made this general shape, but it's not closed quite yet. And so when we look at this picture, we'll realize, and if you look at the end of our statement, the flat is flush. If we're gonna be sticking this onto a surface, we want this to be completely flat. And so it tells us that we'll need to cut a piece off the end. So what we'll do is we want to trim this line here because it goes a little further down. But because of this dimension, we can't quite trim it yet. So what we'll do is we'll delete this dimension and then we'll make a line that starts here and just goes 90 degrees out. And then all I have to do is use the trim modification. Okay. And if I zoom in real close, you'll see that it becomes a dotted line that when I click it, it just trims right up nice and neatly. And I can do the same thing on this other side. So I'll go over here, 90 degrees, and then trim. And you'll see I got an error because I forgot to remove the dimension. So if I have a dimension attached to this line here and I try to trim it, it'll figure out that I'm creating a conflicting dimension. And so it wants me to delete it first, and then I can trim it. This may also happen if you're trying to trim uh, circles that have dimensions on them. You just want to be careful with what you're trying to define and what you're trying to get rid of. Sometimes it's useful to use the split function, which will, I'll give you an example if I undo here. So right now this, this line here is considered one full line, even though the, there's an intersection. Here. So if I use the split, then what will happen is I can split it there and it creates this difference. So now these are considered as two separate lines. And then this I can just right click and delete as if it were own, its own entity. Okay, so now that we've finished that part, we can go ahead and extrude it. And if you'll notice at the beginning, it's a two inch tall half pipe or two inch deep uh, in case you were confused, I made sure to specify that it's two inches in this direction. Okay. So now there's only one more thing to worry about, and it's the tabs. Because a shield is all great, but we need a way to fasten it. So we'll go ahead and start a sketch. And the way this is described is we're going to create two concentric circles uh, and the outer circle is going to be tangent to the edge of the half pipe. So what, what does that mean? Well, if you could figure it out, great. And if you can't, well, I'll show you exactly what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and project the geometry of this whole half pipe here. So I can interact with these edges without having to worry about it at all. And then I'm going to create a circle just in, in space over here. It's going to be 0.18 in diameter. I'll zoom in over here. And then I'll create another circle. It's 0.3. Great. And now, let's see here. What can we do to make this point the right height above this line? Well, one way you can do it is you can dimension the center point down to this line here will be our outer diameter divided by two, and that'll put it at the radius. And now we have the perfect, um, perfect spacing in this direction. And now we need to make this edge tangent with the half pipe. So we use this tangent constraint here, click the circle and this line, and all of a sudden it's nice and constrained. So now we, all we have to do is create these supporting lines here and make sure they're 90 degrees, but of course the computer's assuming it, so we'll go ahead and make this tangent, oh, wrong way, you just have to hit, click escape and then try again, and then once I've constrained that, it works. Uh, and so for simplicity, when we're going to extrude, I'm going to do this in advance, I'm going to go ahead and split 
this circle here. So I can go ahead and delete these. And as you can see, I, accident I actually deleted the whole constraint. So if I go ahead and dimension this again, then it'll be all right. So I have to do the same thing on the other side, but instead I will just create a mirror. One more thing that I forgot about, uh, I accidentally caught in this extra line here. Let's see if I can delete it, or if it's considered part of the geometry. Okay, it's considered part of the geometry, so we don't have to worry about it. Another thing we have to worry about is when we are going to extrude these two tabs, and then later the third one, it will require a closed shape, and when it's only closed by this reference geometry, it won't count. So we just have to create two lines here. And now it's considered a, a closed shape. So now we make one more tab and we'll follow pretty much the same, pretty much the same set of instructions, so 0.18, and 3. And of course I could reference other parameters to make it a, a more dynamic um, sketch. And make this tangent. So you'll see it's still not constrained because it's not really sure where these should go. So I have to do a vertical constraint here. Okay. There's still a dimension needed. I'm not totally sure where it is. It might have to do with this extra line I put down here. But it's okay. Sometimes when you're making parts for other people and they give you limited details, then you'll have to see if what they give you um, and when you're completely dimensioned how they want it, you'll need to see if it'll work or if they need to give you more details. And this time we'll try to trim. And it works just fine, sometimes it doesn't. Right. Now we can finish the sketch and extrude it. And then if you look at the uh, instructions, it's 0.1 inches thick. This tab. Now something, looking at this part and even looking at the diagram, a change that we could make to make these tabs stronger and to make them easier to machine would be to add fillets. So the default is an eighth of an inch fillet, which I think is a pretty standard and um, easy fillet to add when machining. And once we do that, then the shape becomes a little stronger at these corners now that they're rounded and a little easier if you're wanting to do this on a mill um, or you know however you choose to make this part you want to make it as easy as possible so now you've created this part and you're good to go if you're not really sure about dimensions i believe you should be able to check the stl file for the half pipe um, but as always, if you have any questions, just ask in the piazza or shoot a note to your instructors and we'll do our best to help you out. We'll see you next week.